G'day guys, how are you going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and in today's video we're going to be talking about streaming. This is a tutorial on how you can use Streamlabs OBS to stream to YouTube or Mixer, Twitch and get a 1080p 60 frames per second stream and get a stream that is high quality and hopefully without any buffering or um, any latency or anything like that. This um, can also be used as a tutorial if you want to record um, straight to your computer and then upload that video at a later date. If you have any questions or if you're wondering what kind of um, hardware I'm using, like the microphone, webcam, computer, um, that will be all down in the description. But if there's something that I might have missed in this video somehow, um, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you want to see a live stream, I guess, in action in real time, um, you can catch me live on YouTube every Thursday and every Saturday. So now that's all said and done, let's begin. Alrighty guys, so before I go through and show you the settings that I use for Streamlabs OBS, I just want to say one quick thing and that is, I assume if you're watching this video you're um, thinking about streaming or you're already streaming to YouTube Mixer or Twitch or one of those platforms and you're having maybe a little bit of issues and you sort of already know the software Streamlabs pretty well and you know where to sort of find the settings and all that kind of stuff. If you also want to get more information on streaming and some really good resources, I thought I should just share those with you. So Alpha Gaming, who is run by a guy called Harris Heller, um, he has been really helpful for me to find out what sort of hardware and settings to use. So I'll leave a link to his channel and also another guy called Epos Fox who runs a streaming video recording channel. And he has been really awesome as well at sort of helping explain what each setting does uh, and how they can affect your stream and how you can improve quality as well. So I'll leave, I guess, links to both of those channels. So definitely go out and check those guys because I think they're a really good resource if um, streaming is something that you're thinking about doing uh, more and more of in 2020. So in Streamlabs here, I'll just go through some of the settings that I personally use um, and what I've been finding that has worked really really well for me in the last couple of weeks so in the output section where it says streaming here a lot of this is grayed out right now because i'm currently recording using Streamlabs, so i can't modify it but this will also give you a really good understanding of um, how the stream will look because my recording is going to be the same settings as my stream so i'll explain what i mean um, my encoder i'm using the nvenc new encoder because i've got one of the latest nvidia graphic cards if you do have an NVIDIA graphic card and NVENC is an option, definitely choose that as an option. If it doesn't show up, then use X264, although you might find that things, uh, especially if you're gaming and streaming, could be a little bit too demanding. So uh, if you have NVENC, definitely use it. My rate control is CBR. My bit rate is 6500. Keyframe interval is two. Quality um, is set for my preset and my profile is set to high. Look ahead is turned off, psycho visual tuning is on, GPU is zero, max B frames two. In, I'll just actually wait one second so you guys can sort of take that in and take a screenshot, press pause, write any of that down. And so now we'll go to recording. So this is if you want to just record to your computer and then maybe upload that video at a later date. So here I've got the exact same settings, um, which is a good example though of what you can see now will be what you see on one of my live streams because those settings are exactly the same. Um, so recording format is MP4, audio track one, recording is again the NVENC new encoder, bit rate is uh, set to 6500, my rate control is still CBR, that hasn't changed, it's a like for like of my streaming settings. Keyframe is two, preset is quality, profile is high, um, look at heads off, psycho visual tuning is turned on, GPU zero, max B frames two. So they're my settings for my, I guess, output. Um, the audio is 160, that's my bit rate for the audio. And if we go to the audio section now, you can see that my sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. Um, in stereo, my microphone is my Thronmax M Drill Zero, that's what I'm using. Um, if you guys are wondering as well, the camera I'm using is the Logitech Brio webcam and my Logitech Brio webcam settings, I'll show you that as well if you'd like. Um, video settings now this is going to change for a lot of you because some of you might have 4k monitors or 1920 by 1080p monitors so 
the one that I'm using, my resolution for my monitor, even though it is 4K, I've got it set to 2560 by 1440. My output scaled resolution is 1920 by 1080. So that's what the audience will see. And then my filter is the Lance Cezos, Lance Sos, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sharpen scaling, 32 samples, FPS type is common, FPS values um, are 60. So 60 is because I want it to be 60 frames per second. If you are finding that things are a little bit stuttery or uh, it's too jittery, there's a bit of lag, bit of buffering, not smooth is what I'm trying to say, maybe drop that down to 30 um, and you might get better performance for your live streams. Um, they'll hopefully be a little bit smoother. But for me personally, this is what I found to get a really good 60 frames per second stream to YouTube at 1920 by 1080, 1080p. Um, Hotkeys, I'm not gonna go through those because this is all customizable. This is just for switching scenes. Um, in the advanced section, under where it says process priority for Streamlabs, the application, I've set mine to normal. My video color format is NV12, color space is 601, color range is partial, and I've got my GPU as my render device. So just copy those settings as well if you'd like. Um, audio and recording and all this other stuff down the bottom here, you don't really need to pay too much attention to. Um, one thing to mention though, down at the bottom here where it says network, there's an option here for dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. If you have a network and the bitrate isn't consistent and there's maybe other people streaming or um, playing games or your network is just sort of up and down and all over the place, experiment with this dynamically change bitrate option because you might find that this can help if you're dropping frames on your live streams. Um, I've played around with it and it hasn't made any difference for me. That's because I've got quite a fast internet connection. Um, but if you are one of those I guess people who has a slower internet connection, this can possibly help um, helping reduce drop frames and things like that. Um, all the other options here, if we go all the way down, aren't really going to impact your live streams or your recordings. So I'm not gonna talk about that too much. You can go through and play around with that at your own, uh, in your own time and at your own leisure, I guess. So they're my settings for Streamlabs and I think I should probably just mention a few other things that I found to help. So if I go into the settings here and type in game mode on Windows 10, I've actually found that having game mode turned off has actually helped with my game and streaming. Um, having this turned on, I found that I was actually dropping frames, even though there was plenty of hardware resources available. Um, that's something that I found turning off game mode has definitely helped. And then the other thing, if I can quickly find the application directory, let me just go into my start menu here and find Streamlabs um, and go to the file location, is I've actually got, uh, where are we? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Give me one second, properties. Okay, so if you find the um, Streamlabs exe file in your program files directory, I've actually got Streamlabs set to run as program administrator. And this is, I guess, just something a lot of people have done in order to make sure the computer knows that this application needs to be something that is running as a priority. So I've gone ahead and turned that on and definitely found that has helped as well. So they're my settings for Windows 10, I guess, as well as Streamlabs. I hope that helps. Um, I will just quickly close these boxes here and Maybe just lastly, if you do want to go ahead and um, make your stream look a little bit more interesting than just having a webcam in a corner, you can get overlays. And the one that I got recently was from a website called, I think it was owned.tv. And you can do cool things like put a border and show your most recent subscriber and donator um, on your webcam borders if you want to do that and have some sort of animations here, which helps stand out. Or if you want to, you can actually go ahead and get a full on overlay like this one or any one that you like to make it look a little bit more interesting as well. So you can have like your chat here show up um, on one side of the screen. You can have your, if I go ahead and do a test here and show you like a most recent subscriber that might pop up in the corner um, and links to all of your social media as well. So that's hopefully a lot of information, but all the information that you need to get your stream looking really, really nice. 
if you want to see me live again every Thursday and every Saturday. And uh, thanks again for watching. Like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.